Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Today's quick reflection is from Surah Yusuf, verse number 33. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Qala Rabbi sijanu ahabbu ilayya mimma tad'oonani ilayhi. These are some of the most courageous words that were ever uttered in the history of humanity. So Allah is quoting Yusuf alayhi salam and he says something quite remarkable. He says, Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma tad'oonani ilayhi. Mimma yad'oonani ilayhi. He says, my Lord, prison is more beloved to me than what they are calling me to. So he actually talks about prison and uses a word you're not, you don't normally associate with prison, love. Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'oonani ilayhi. Because he was facing a situation at a particular point in his life. And at that point he said these remarkable words. That at this point in my life, being in prison is more beloved to me than what they are calling me to. And we know the story, no need to go into the details. The story of the, the women seducing Yusuf at the prime of his youth. And he rejects them. And he was innocent. This is the only verse in the Quran that speaks of prison. Only place where prison is mentioned in the Quran. And it's remarkable that he was innocent. The whole world knew he was innocent. The people who put him in prison knew he was innocent. Um, the people who accused him knew he was innocent. It's like every single person around him knew he was innocent. But yet the circumstances were such that he had to be placed in prison. You find that story repeated throughout humanity. That's often the case. Sometimes prison is the only choice. And prison is a sunnah of the anbiya. It's a practice of our predecessors. Not that it's something to be aspired to, but it's going to be inevitable uh, in the struggle for truth. If you're going to be believers, you're going to stand for Allah Azza wa Jal and His way, then sometimes you're faced with these circumstances. So just think about that for ourselves. Can we ever say ever in any point in our life that at this point prison would be more beloved to me? I would love to be in prison, but in order to escape the circumstances I find myself, myself in. So these are tremendous words of extraordinary courage. And Shaykh al ibn Taymiyyah, I want to share his reflections, his tadabbur of this verse. And it's something he analyzes the psychology of Yusuf and it's something remarkable. It's something that all of us can relate to and it's something that applies to any human being in adversity. So he, he says that here there are two elements here in the life of, uh, or in at this moment of Yusuf's life. One is sabr and the second is isti'ana. So if you analyze what, what he is going to sabr, Sabr is accepting the consequences of your right actions. That's basically what it is in this situation. You do certain things that you believe are right, you stand by your principles, then you have to be willing to accept the consequences of that. That's sabr. Then isti'ana comes next. Isti'ana is a recognition and commitment that only Allah can help you in the circumstances that you are facing. So these are the two elements that Yusuf salam had in this particular verse. He had the willingness to stand up and face the consequences. That's why he said, prison is more beloved to me. And then in the next portion of the verse, he says, وَإِلَّا عَنِّي الْجَاهِلِينَ He said, my Lord, continuing the prayer, my Lord, if you do not avert these plans from me, then I might well have fallen into these traps and become among the ignorant. So he's reaching out to Allah, although he took the stand and he's facing the consequences and he's willing to accept those consequences, even while entering prison, he's calling out to Allah, Ya Allah, you're the only one who can help me in these circumstances. So this is sabr and isti'ana. This is very, very important. These are the two qualities that are highlighted here. And these are the qualities all the prophets call their people 
to embrace at the time of adversity. So hundreds of years later, for instance, from the progeny of Yusuf came the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And he stood up before his enslaved people. Um, they were facing, they were prisoners of their circumstances. Fir'aun was oppressing them, oppressing them. And qala Musa liqawmi, Allah says, you know, when Musa was standing up, this was one of the favorite verses of our Shaykh Mawlana Islahi. He would often share this address of Musa to his people. Qala Musa liqawmihi, what did Musa say to his people when they were facing those challenging times uh, in the face of Fir'aun? He said two things. Ista'inu billahi wasbiru. Ista'ana and sabr, the same two qualities that we're talking about. So this is, these are the qualities you need when you're facing adversity. Ista'inu billahi wasbiru. And then Musa goes on. These are the qualities. So if you go into further detail, Ibn Taymiyyah is so remarkable. And I think the secret behind his understandings of, of, of Quran is he was deeply spiritual. He would make the dabur of the verses. And secondly, I think another part of it is he spent much of his life in prison. So perhaps he could see things that other people could not see. So he says there are four things here in this verse, four elements. So you have sabr and isti'ana, right? So sabr is, uh, you know, where Yusuf is willing to face the consequences of his right actions. But prior to sabr, there's, an, there's, there's something called taqwa. Taqwa is the fear and the, and, the, and the awareness of Allah Azza wa Jal. So prior to facing prison, uh, Yusuf refused the advances of the women because he had taqwa. He had this uh, awareness, this uh, uh, consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal, coupled with fear. So taqwa is the acute awareness and fear of God that leads you to make the right choices. So that's the first step. So prior to when Yusuf spoke these words, that's taqwa. And then once you have taqwa and you take certain decisions, then the next step is sabr. Sabr is a willingness to endure the consequences of your right actions, as I said. So right, one step before sabr is taqwa. So taqwa has to be followed up by sabr. And then the second half of the verse, وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي Reaching out to Allah isti'ana. Isti'ana means that you recognize that only Allah holds the keys to your fortune. Only Allah can release you from prison or any circumstance you're facing. So that's isti'ana. And then isti'ana is followed by tawakkul. Tawakkul is your complete trust in this process of Allah. Uh, this process of Allah's way. You know, taqwa, then sabr, then isti'ana, then tawakkul. So this is a natural process all believers have to go through in the time of adversity. And if you go throughout the Quran, any place Allah mentions believers dealing with adversity, you'll find some combination of these qualities. Either all of them or Allah highlighting one of the other. But it's the same four-step process. What is it? Taqwa, sabr, isti'ana, and tawakkul. So for instance, in, in, in Abyssinia, when the Muslims made the hijrah, the first hijrah to Abyssinia, escaping the persecution. What does Allah say? وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا فِي اللَّهِ مِن بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا لَنُبَوِّ أَنَّهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَلَا أَجْرُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says those who make the hijrah, who forsake their homes for the sake of Allah, after enduring persecution, we shall grant them a good abode in this world, and surely the reward of the hereafter is much greater. And then Allah summarizes their state. What does He say? الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ So here you have sabr and you have tawakkal. It's also part of that same process. And then Allah mentions Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran, the Muslim struggle against their enemies. Allah advises them. What does He say? وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا If you have sabr and you have taqwa, then nothing can harm you in the least. And this is the same thing with the Prophet uh, in the verses dealing with the Battle of Badr and so on and so forth. So in severe trials, Allah highlights these qualities, sabr and taqwa. So he says, When tasbiru wa tattaqu fa inna dhalika min azmi umur Allah calls sabr and taqwa the greatest of matters. See, these are the great qualities that will allow you to endure the most horrible circumstances in life. Sabr and Taqwa. So again, to summarize, in the end, 
Taqwa is the awareness and fear of God that makes you, leads you to make the right choices. And this is followed up by Sabr, which is the willingness to endure the consequences of those choices. And then this is followed up by Isti'ana, which is you reaching out to Allah. You recognize that only Allah holds the keys to help you and release you from your circumstances. And finally, Tawakkul is that complete trust in this entire process. Now, when you look at our believer, the believers, too many believers fail at every level. So at, at the level of Taqwa, many of us, we never have the courage to make the right choices. There's a failure of Taqwa. So when, when it comes to making a quick buck, for instance, or you're coming to a career choice, you're not looking at what's haram and halal. You're looking at what's going to bring you the greatest salary. So people cut corners. So there's a failure of the first step in this process, Taqwa. And then some people do have Taqwa. They make the right choices, but then they have the failure of the second. What's the second? Sabr. So what happens? They take, make the right choice, but as soon as adversity hits them, as soon as they're facing any uh, challenging situation, they give up and they go back and they run. This is a failure of sabr. And then many people might pass taqwa, might pass sabr, but then they have a failure of isti'ana because when they're in difficult circumstances, they reach out to other than Allah for help. They might uh, rely on other authorities and other systems for help and not relying on the trust and the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. So in summary, many people don't have complete trust in Allah Tawakkul. So these are things we need to highlight and revive in our lives. May Allah give us that kind of taqwa, that kind of sabr, that kind of isti'ana, and that kind of tawakkul. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.